Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hey everybody and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. How are you guys doing today on this Wednesday? I just laugh because I have to share this. So I'm in Florida and so they're always, you know, cutting the grass around here and blowing the leaves and it's it it just makes me laugh that there's like how many days in a week and they always show up right before my radio show on Wednesdays. And I'm like, oh my God. So if you hear a little buzzing in the background, that's what that is. But I don't think it's going to be too bad because they're kind of down the street. So we may hear it here and there. But I'm just like, really, of any of the time and days you could come, you got to come right before I'm on the show live. Of course, that's just the way it is. I guess, you know, the universe has a sense of humor, right? But today I have um, my returning guest. I love when he's on Psychic trance channel Reverend Gregory Possman and he's gonna join me in just a couple minutes and he's gonna be channeling Archangel Raphael today and this is a first for me because I've talked to Gregory now numerous times and I've never spoken to Raphael so I'm excited for that today so I just want to share a little bit um, a few things um, first a shout out to the people that listen to me on a regular basis thank you so much it means the world to me that you come and you keep returning and listening to my show And if you are tuning in for the first time, I just want to give you a big warm welcome. I hope you keep coming back. Um, We always put the shows up in the archives on Ohm Times Radio. So any show, if you can't make it live in the future and you want to listen, you can always listen to the replay. And I also put the show up on my website, postcardstotheuniverse.com, and you can go through any of the shows. And I have a bunch of them with Gregory, and they're all listed there. So you can always go back and listen to some of his other shows and some of his channeling. A little bit about a few things that I'm doing. I'm a photographer. I'm an I'm an author, and I have a book called Postcards to the Universe: Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams. And I talk all about manifesting. That's my thing. I love to talk about it. I love to share it. And I have people send me manifesting postcards. Please send one, by the way, if you're listening to this. Um, I photograph it, and when your manifestation shows up in your reality, you can you let me know, and you can maybe come on my show as a guest or share it in a future book or a blog post. I I take pictures of the postcards. They're kind of like little mini vision boards. So I think everybody's aware of what uh, vision boarding is. So my book came out right before COVID. And so what I started doing um, probably about six months ago is I started reading live videos from the book. And I share those on Instagram and TikTok. And I post them on LinkedIn and YouTube. About five minute videos of each person's story, and then I share the image of their postcard. But I started re-photographing each of the postcards. There's 30 of them in my book, and I started re-photographing them. Um, And that's been a lot of fun, you know. It's changed a lot since the book came out, the way that I photograph them. And it's interesting to see how much my perspective has changed. So you can see those. I share um, those each Mondays, usually on Mondays. I call them my magical messages. And this week's is The Universe Has My Back. And if, if you think about that, a lot of people think, oh, God, why does this happen to me? Why am I, these, these bad things keep happening? Uh, if you can switch that thought and think that the universe actually is always working out for your highest good and give yourself um, some time to look back on your life, you'll see that the universe does always have your back because you'll notice um, things manifest when you stop trying to control the outcome right? When you let it go, it, it'll show up. Or you'll notice synchronicities seem to happen all the time. Or 
Some of those things that you thought you wanted, when you look back in hindsight, you see that it was a blessing that it didn't show up for you, right? Maybe that relationship or that job or whatever, and you realize now, oh my God, I'm so glad that didn't work out. That's just an example of the universe having your back. Or, or if you think about how much time and energy, I mean, I know I've done this in the past, that we've wasted on worrying about how something would turn out only to look back now and see that it turned out fine. So those are just a couple of examples of how you can remind yourself that the universe has your back. And like I asked earlier, please send me some manifesting postcards. You can uh, find out how to make them and where to send them if you go to postcardstotheuniverse.com. And I've been doing a couple of workshops. I started doing some workshops, and one is called Manifesting Through Gratitude, A Visual Journey. And in that workshop, we're going to use our camera phones as a tool for manifesting um, by concentrating and focusing on being grateful for what we already have in our life. So more of that can show up. And uh, it's five weeks. It's Thursday evening, 6 to 8 p.m. And that class just keeps rotating. So as soon as one finishes, then I'll set a date for another. So you can find that out on my uh, website also if you want to know more about that. And then I have one coming up. Um, so it's going to be coming up next week, actually, February 17th, 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And it is um, a manifesting postcard workshop. And it's called Put Your Wishes to Work and Manifest the Life You Desire. This is a three-hour workshop. It's Saturday, 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And you're doing these from the comfort of your home. It's online. And we're going to be making manifesting postcards. So Hopefully, I will see you in either of my workshops. Um, yeah, they're a lot of fun. If you have any questions, you know, just reach out to me. I'm willing, able, always, always open to helping people create a, a postcard or if they have any questions about anything, yeah, you can always find me. All right, so to talk to my guest today, I'm going to read you a short bio on him for those who are joining me for the first time who don't know him. Many people who listen to me all the time are already familiar with Reverend Gregory Passman, but he began as a psychic trance channel in 91. He channels over 40 light beings, including Sananda, Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, as well as master teachers, Spirit Kuan Yin, Mary, the five members of the Council of Shambhala, and and many others, and he also channels the Palladians, Syrians, and Venusians, and today he's going to be live channeling Archangel Raphael on the mental, emotional, and physical healing for all of us on this planet. We could use that right now, and he performs workshops throughout the world, and he offers recorded, channeled, private sessions by phone. I highly recommend them. I've had one before, and I know my sister has too, because she tells me. I think she's had a few already. <laughs> and, um, each month month, you can hear a free channeled message at his website, gregorypossman.com. That's G-R-E-G-O-R-Y-P-O-S-S-M-A-N.com. Hi, Gregory. How you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear things are going good for you. I know I see your photos um, sometimes, like your, your fun family photos, and you're traveling, and you're doing fun things, and that's great. You're seeing your family down here in Florida. I love it. Well, it's really synchronous that you talk about the universe having your back. I absolutely <laughs> feel that way, and the gifts that are coming to me are just amazing. I just brought home a whole truckload of firewood gifted to me by my neighbor and only a man who lives in the mountains of North Carolina could get excited about a truckload of firewood, but that's me. That's me. <laughs> I would be thrilled with a truckload of firewood if I had the opportunity to actually light a fire in a fireplace that we would even need it. Listen, it's been beautiful lately, though, because I'm not going to complain too bad because we've had cool nights, beautiful days. I mean, this is why I think all the snowbirds are here right now for the weather that we're having this not week. Sure. It's been gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So what's going on with you? You have any... Um, workshops or webinars coming up? I do. I do have a webinar that's going to come up on Saturday, the 3rd of March, and it Ooh. is all about healing. This seems to be a healing month. Mm, and, uh, interesting. The monthly message came from 10 Bears, and I was out in Sedona, Arizona with a new lady in my life, and that was mm -hmm. awesome. 
And uh, we had a great time, and then I did the message out there. And um, so that was about healing. And uh, this new webinar that's going to be on the 3rd of March, that's all about healing. There's a healing team consists mm -hmm. of Quan Yin, Ling, uh, the mm -hmm. Christ Consciousness, Ananda, Mira, the Sixth Seat of the Council, Mary, Raphael, mm -hmm. and there is a rumor that the leader of the Syrian healing team, Sonos, might show up, so we'll see. Mm. But uh, yeah, if uh, people go to the website, the event is right on the front page, and you're welcome to sign up, and if they cannot listen on that day, then mm -hmm. I will send them the files that will be recorded, and they'll be able to listen to them whenever they wish. So, oh, that's, nice! That's the news. All that's the news. The news. Okay, to be printed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's a Saturday, March. Is that March third? You said what uh, time? Second, what are the time? March oh, March second. Keep saying the third. Yeah, it's March second. It's on. Second. What are the? Uh, what times? What are your 9 times? Nine a.m. to it's nine a.m. to twelve noon New York time, and okay. Uh, so it's three nice. Hours. Yeah. Nice. Now, when you were, you said you were in Sedona, and who came through? You said who? Which channel? Who did you? I, I is channeled it, is, an entity for several years. His name is Ten Bears. Apparently, okay. in his previous life as a human, he was a Comanche huh. chief, mm. and uh, he did create a little bit of mayhem during his uh, sojourn on the planet. So he's now reversing all of that and become has become very 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 service oriented so very interesting entity oh that's interesting so this is a newer entity and you said it just been the last few years who's yeah, come through for about you three about three wow. three maybe four years I, I don't i can't keep track anymore but yeah it's yeah about three or four <laughs> years <laughs> We'll go with that. How's that? We'll just go with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah, I love that. I love it. I just actually, I, I was sharing uh, last night that I just started re-watching <clears throat> an old show um, that was from the early 90s called Northern Exposure. And it's, I love that show. So Prime is, um, you hear me giving it a shout out, right? I'm not getting any money for this. <laughs> this is just me. <laughs> Prime is streaming it right now. And I loved it back then. And now watching it from the perspective and the wisdom I have now compared to then. I just love how the there's so many mystical messages in it and how quirky it is. And there's so much about um, indigenous people from, you know, that, that place, Alaska, and all these spiritual messages. It was like so beyond its time. You know, it's, it's really, it's a really great show. So, you know, I highly recommend it if anybody's looking for something good to watch, you know, that's not heavy. And it has, it has very interesting messages I think I love it I'm just really enjoying re-watching it I don't know if you watched it back in the day did you watch it I did I did watch yeah. it it's probably time to watch it again <laughs> oh god yeah especially with your lady friend you guys can enjoy uh, watching a glass of wine watching Northern Exposure I love how quirky they all are and all the mystical dreams everybody has and the effects of you know when the northern lights are going and how the moon affects them and the spirit walkers that come in for you know it's just so great it's a great show you know and watching it like I said now knowing the things I know that I didn't know back then it's amazing so yeah but today we're going to be talking to Raphael and, and and just so everyone knows what I do is um, usually I'll ask Gregory who's who is um, wanting to come through because they'll have a message for us all of us and I noticed um, the last time I think you were on. I was talking to you, and I said I never had uh, Raphael or Gabriel as um, on, and Gabriel being the Archangel of Messages. That's interesting, and I'm doing my radio show. So maybe Gabriel will show up next time. But Raphael said that he would like to. We're saying he, you know, just because we need a pronoun, but it doesn't have to be he. But Raphael's coming, wanted to come through, so because he wants to talk about the healing, right? That's what that's what you felt. Absolutely. Absolutely. You get like a nudge, right? Like you'll get like a thought, a nudge. Like how do you how do you know that? It just comes into my mind, and whomever it is speaks to me in my head and says, uh, "We're up. It's our turn," or whatever they say. They don't say that. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, I know, I know. It just mean. pops into my mind, and then they oftentimes mention what they want to talk about, and those were, you know, the. Mental, emotional, and physical healing were the, well, mm -hmm. that was the issue that Raphael came up with. So that's what Perfect. we're going to do. 
Yeah. All right. So anything else you want to share as yourself before you... Just a lot of <laughs> gratitude. My gratitude for you having me on the show and being able to share my work. It's it's wonderful, and I'm, I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. Aww. Thank well, Thank I you. am too. I am so grateful that my parents decided they wanted to renew their vows, <laughs> and then I found you. <laughs> but I'm sure now I realize that wasn't just me. That was spirit and the angels guiding me to you because of anybody that I could have found it was you that I found and so it was meant to be right there was a reason for this no yeah no coincidences divine (laughs) intervention for sure no question divine intervention okay whenever you're ready we'll go so Raphael knows I do have to take a commercial break so Raphael has no problem like just chilling out for a couple minutes till we come back he's good (laughs) he's counting on it he's counting okay Okay, Okay, good. Here we go. All right. We are the one called Raphael. We are the Archangel Raphael. And we are grateful for the opportunity to share whatever you wish to know and as you have pointed out we would love to discuss the aspect of healing and perform a healing on those who are listening if they are interested and give their consent greetings Mm, Thank you, Archangel Raphael. Thank you for being here with me today. I'm so honored to speak with you. I'm going to give you over the platform so that you can share with everybody um, the messages you wanted us to hear about the mental and emotional and physical healing for all of us. It would be our honor. We would ask each of you to close your eyes for a moment and to breathe. And as you breathe, ask yourself a question. And the question is, what keeps me in this pattern, whether it is mental, emotional, or physical pain? Why do I continue to engage myself in this process of self-punishment? and breathe. And the answer is unimportant. We would ask you now to allow yourselves to decide that there is no valid reason for this continued self-punishment. And open, open to the possibility of a spontaneous healing, a resolution to this unending or seemingly unending pattern. And decide that in your mind and in your heart, love is more important than any other aspect and it is self-love that you have decided to engage in and breathe that into your being. Wondrous particles of light, perhaps they are rose-colored or pink, perhaps they are blue or green or yellow, your choice, it doesn't matter. And allow those particles to seem to shower into your body from whatever source you can feel them coming and breathe. I absorb these particles of light and love and I give myself permission to allow them to merge with every part of my being, 
the internal, the external, the endomorphic shell around my being called my skin, and every aspect of me, and breathe. And I give my physical, mental, and emotional bodies permission to engage in metamorphosis like a butterfly I convert I transmute and I transpose all of my energies and the minions of Metatron the angelic realm are blessing every part of my being, supporting, nurturing, and healing my being. And the word that comes to me is catharsis. I encourage and I allow catharsis within my being and so it is and breathe thank you for that believe it is we believe it is time for your break but um we can take it now, since, since that would be good. It's a little early, but that's fine. Why don't we take our break here, and then we'll come back and let everybody sit with that, that healing. Be back in just a couple minutes. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Everyone has a story. I have a story. You have a story. We all have a story. As I see it, you have three choices. Allow your story to define you, use it to excuse you, or utilize it as a method to empower you. It's your life. You have the power. You choose. Rewrite your story on finduniquelyyou.com. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. 
And don't forget to tune in each week here on Om Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. If you're just joining me, I am speaking with Archangel Raphael, actually, and he is being channeled through Reverend uh, Gregory Possman, and he did a beautiful healing for us right before the break. So thank you for that, um, Archangel Raphael. And I wanted to talk about um, cancer because I seem to be hearing more and more people getting cancer, dying from cancer. What is cancer and what is its message for us? Our perception of the disease, and that is important, dis-ease, in other words, a lack of ease in the body, our perception of it is oftentimes a lack of forgiveness. And so perhaps one who is afflicted with that particular condition might ask themselves, what is it or whom is it that I am refusing to forgive? Once one decides that a disease within the body, an upset, an imbalance, is a kind of lesson, and then decides what the lesson might be that they are refusing, in other words, too stubborn to surrender to, then it is much easier to allow the teacher, the disease, the imbalance, the cancer, if you will, to allow it to pass out of the body. And of course, it must first be completely and totally accepted. And once it is, and once the lesson is absorbed, then oftentimes a miraculous healing takes place. Thank you. So going from that point of thought about forgiveness and, and allowing it, accepting it in our body, as far as our medical treatments that we have here, on our planet, like chemotherapy and radiation, what do you say to that as part of the treatment? Those particular aspects are alterations of energy. And the alteration of energy is destructive in its nature. We are not criticizing. We have no right to judge anything humanity does. And... It is important to recognize that the alteration that takes place can be a form of destruction. That destruction can take quite a toll on the physical body's ability to come back or return or heal, regenerate, if you will. And oftentimes, the body is not able to regenerate based upon those treatments taking place. Humanity is in the process of determining what dosage of that destructive nature the body can tolerate. Sometimes the physicians, the medical ones, as you call them, sometimes they are able to calculate appropriately what the body can handle or withstand. Oftentimes they are not. And when they are not, the destruction of the cellular structure of the body cannot replenish itself, cannot regenerate. And in that case, the onset of either death or paralysis or whatever condition might take place is oftentimes accelerated. We suggest that one who is faced with such a trauma allow themselves to attune to their intuition and determine if the medical treatment is appropriate or not. For indeed, it is their choice, of course, because it is their body. Oftentimes, it is an aspect of desperation in which one decides 
whether or not to partake of the medical treatment available. Sometimes it is appropriate, and sometimes it is not. Okay. I've been hearing about um, new treatments coming out where they're teaching the cells of your body to um, dissolve the cancer cells instead of um, chemo or radiation as alternative therapies. Can you comment on that or can you give us any information about some new therapies that are going to be coming to us to help with cancer, especially cancer? Some of it is called stem cell. Some of it is called regeneration. There are a number of names for it, and we are very much in favor of it. In other words, we believe that it is a very appropriate approach to the healing of any sort of disease or imbalance within the body. And it is to understand that that, in combination with the spiritual, mental, and emotional adjustment of surrender and forgiveness, if those aspects are included in the process, then the process can work quite quickly. If they are not, the process can still work, but it will not work nearly as quickly or as effectively. In other words, one must completely and totally readjust one's vision of what is taking place and perhaps life itself. Example, if one does not believe in reincarnation, it is impossible to look at what you call spontaneous or simultaneous lifetimes and determine if the forgiveness that must take place comes from one of those particular dimensions or realities. And if one is completely unable to see that, then they cannot allow that forgiveness to occur, in which case it can be almost impossible to reverse the process that the imbalance or disease is attempting to create within the body. On the other hand, if one is able to open one's mind, one's vision, and one's ability to look at reality from that perspective, then it is possible that they will create in their life the individual, whatever individual it might be, who can lead them to a form of treatment or cure, healing, if you will. Hmm. So forgiveness is very big then. We should all be working on um, even being healthy, just forgiving everyone and everything and ourselves for everything all the time. That's something you would recommend us to do for our emotional health? Not only would we recommend it, we would vehemently, enthusiastically recommend it. And when we use the word vehemently, we are talking about enthusiasm. Yes, we believe that forgiveness on your planet could heal everything. Imagining that all were willing to forgive every single act that ever took place, there would be no war, there would be no injustice, and there would be no violence. The outcome would be peace not just peace in the neighborhood, but peace, peace on the planet, global peace, as one might put it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, I do know the importance of forgiveness. Um, so as we evolve as a species, if we are getting better at forgiveness and love and we are living longer. How is that affecting the planet as far as population and making sure that our population isn't out of control, that the earth can't handle it, can't handle all of us? Our truth is that your planet could handle five times as many people as what live on it at the moment. And the reason that it could handle that is because the level of conscious awareness would rise to a point 
where each and every individual respected the planet and therefore did everything possible to allow the planet to heal just as they were healing. Mm. And the aspect that all are one and the one is all is the reason that that would work. Your scientists believe that your planet cannot handle the kind of reproduction that is taking place and the kind mm -hmm. of growth that is happening. That growth would be no issue whatsoever for Gaia or Terra if, in fact, the level mm -hmm. of conscious awareness were to rise as it could, if all were willing to see it from the perspective that the one is all and the all is one. Call it unity, call it wholeness, call it whatever you like. It really doesn't matter what verbiage one uses. It is the fact that conscious awareness can change everything. Mm, nah, that makes that makes a lot of sense when the way you say it. <laughs> Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, so I wanted to ask you specifically, because I've never got a chance to speak with you before, about uh, the pandemic COVID and what its lesson was for us. And should we be looking out for more pandemics to be happening on our planet coming soon? If the conscious awareness that we speak of is accelerated, and if those who are aware continue to share their awareness with those who are not, in other words, what we call the awakening or the acceleration of awareness, if that continues to take place, there will be no reason for any more pandemics or epidemics on your planet. On the other hand, if the refusal to accept that awareness continues, then there will be more epidemics because those particular epidemics or pandemics or whatever word you use, those diseases are a way for those who refuse to accelerate into that awareness to leave the planet. It is an opportunity for them to make their transition. And having made that transition, they may then look back and see from the other side what they might have accepted but refused to do so. Does that make sense to you? Yes, that makes sense. How do you see us evolving as a human species from the angelic perspective? What do you proliferate on your program what do you offer those who listen to you I offer um, alternative ways to look at the world people who are contributing in positive and uplifting ways that's what I like to offer to the people listening to my show and do you have any idea how many people listen at any particular time no, I have no idea. And do you know why you have no idea? Um, the reason no. is... No, of course you do not. <laughs> the reason is you have faith. And mm. others, many others whom you have spoken to in this same manner, have discussed the importance of that faith. Your faith drives you. And you mm -hmm. are driven. You are mm -hmm. very driven. So, you set about creating the awareness and the opportunity, the platform, if you will, if we can use that word, for mm -hmm. the work of those who are attempting to share that awareness with so many others. You create that platform. And by doing so, you accelerate the growth rate of that awareness that will save the planet. Those who are open to what you have to say and those who are your guests, they are willing to listen. They may not accept everything that is said, and that is fine. 
Of course they don't have to. They accept what they can and leave the rest, so to speak. And in the process, those who are on your show get an opportunity to share with those whom they would never necessarily ever connect with. That is precisely how the awareness and level of it is going to change. And that is the reason the messenger through whom we speak, the one called Ashid or Gregory, thanks you for the opportunity to share with those whom he might not touch otherwise. Mm. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is how, that is how all of this transition will occur. And as that particular process of awareness continues to advance, you will see quantum changes in the quantum field of the earth in terms of all that all of you desire, which of course is the end of violence, the end of war, the end of incarceration, the end of the process that sociopaths oftentimes use to invoke their violence on others. And as that process takes place, you will also see the extraterrestrials making their awareness evident to all of you, for they are indeed forms of higher intelligence. And as that higher intelligence becomes more and more visible on your planet, you will see everything shift and change. Mm. You are not alone by any stretch of anyone's imagination. And the majority of you are very well aware of that. And the healing that can occur as a result of the extraterrestrials making themselves a part of your process will be nothing short of miraculous. Imagine for a moment a world where the medical profession is no longer necessary. Hmm. No longer necessary. In other words, there is no cancer. There is no heart disease. There is no mental or emotional disease. There are no more shootings. There are no more forms of violence. Human trafficking is no longer even, even profitable. There's no reason for it. There's no point. And go one step further, imagining that money, what you call currency, is no longer necessary because everyone is capable of manifesting their desire by simply thinking what they want as long as, as long as no harm of their manifestation comes to any other living creature. When you Mm. adapt and adjust to that, since you're asking about the evolution of humanity, when you come to that point, the earth, the earth can sustain Mm. billions, trillions more people because there is an entirely different state of awareness or consciousness. Now, can any of you see that coming? Can any of you imagine that in your minds? Of course you can, because it has already occurred. It has already taken place, but it has not taken place in this time frame. Mm. And so many of you, like yourself included, have come from the future back in time, if you will, that is one way of putting it, Mm -hmm. back in time to plant those seeds to make certain that that acceleration occurs and takes place. And that explains your impatience and your frustration with the process that is ongoing at this moment in time. Hmm. That sounds like heaven on earth, actually, <laughs> and I'm and glad it it's al- I'm glad it's already happening, and it's just we aren't seeing it at this time right now, but we are on our way. That makes me very hopeful, and it 
helps with my faith <laughs> to keep my faith going. Thank you for that. And thank you for the compliment on what I'm doing personally. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Each and every one of you need to be acknowledged. Each and every one of you need to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. And you don't receive that appreciation frequently. What mm -hmm. you receive is criticism from those who are attached to the past. And with a tremendous amount of risk, look at some of the books that such large percentages of your population consider to be guidelines to life. Some of them are hundreds of years old. Some of them are thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. And yet, they are considered to be profound truths. And in truth, they perpetuate certain belief systems. An eye for an eye? Does that sound like forgiveness? Does no. that sound like unconditional love? We do not mm -hmm. think so. No. And it is not our right to criticize anyone's belief system, and we've no desire to do so. Mm. We are simply saying that there is an entirely new form of thought which can be applied to all of this, and the results of it can be incredible, amazing if one allows oneself the freedom to move into that thought process. Mm. The man Ashid through whom we speak has given us permission to share pieces of his life. He has created in the last year or so several incidents that he form, for in his, formed in his mind what he called betrayal. Hmm. They were not incidents of betrayal. They were opportunities to learn to forgive. And now that he has finally gotten the message, and it has only taken a year, it is important to understand that it is transforming his life. Hmm. He is transforming it. And we are not here to pat him on the back. Heaven knows, as a Leo, his ego is already big enough. <laughs> we are glad you see the humor in that. Well, I'm a Gemini and a double Leo, so I get it. <laughs> we knew you would. Um, so, Raphael, uh, mental health is such an issue, especially with young people, and it is a pandemic with young people, especially taking their own lives because they're suffering terribly. How can we support others who are dealing with mental health issues? A lot of people don't understand it because you can't see the pain like you can with a disease of the body. So how, what can we do? One word, ask. Ask okay. what is going on for them. Ask what they are feeling. Ask. Ask what is going on with them. And then when you get the answer, do not shy away from it. Draw closer to it. What does a fireman do? He goes into the danger. He doesn't run away from the burning house. He runs into the burning house. Allow yourself to connect with the life of that person whom you suspect is in pain and give yourself permission to ask them if there is anything you can do to allow them to feel differently and then listen. Ask and listen. Those are the keys. Too simplistic, mm -hmm. too easy, not complex enough for the brain to accept. And yet, truth. Hmm. That is the truth. Is That makes sense. But is there something, when medical experts say there's something chemically off in certain people's brains that can't function without medications or can't get past it, even though they have, say, been asked or supported? 
by looking into their eyes and connecting with their soul. Whatever chemical imbalance might be taking place can be transformed. Hmm. When you look at someone who is undergoing that kind of process, that illness, that disease, that imbalance, and it's not disease, it's a condition. When you truly connect to their soul, they can transform in moments. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their, in their countenance. You can see it in their behavior. However, it takes a certain amount of courage on the part of the individual who is looking into those eyes to realize they are not going to be harmed they are not going to be hated. None of that is going to happen. In other words, it's love. When they are encountered with love, what comes back is love. Mm. Love begets love. Violence begets violence. And, like it or not, disorientation and loneliness beget the same. Yeah. That is why so many commit suicide on your planet, because there's no connection to another human being. And when that connection is distant and impossible to contain or maintain or create, they feel they have no alternative but self-destruction. Mm. On the other hand, if one person befriends them, and asks them what's going on and shows true interest in them, regardless of what connection there might have been or not been, it can change their outlook immediately. And they can decide that there is a reason for them to continue on this planet. And they will. Mm. And there are millions of those stories where someone mm. was ready ready to take their own life and the interaction between one human being or one angelic being depending on the circumstances because that happens all the time angelic beings interfere so to speak mm -hmm. and it's not interference it's assistance but that's the word we'll use interfere and they inhabit a human body and they have a conversation with that individual and they tell that individual how valuable they are and that individual makes a different decision. Mm. And the one called Cassandra, the Archangel Cassandra, whom very few of you know about, is the one who teaches the angelic realm how to do that. Mm, and if you, want another, if you want another bit of faith, Many of you who are human in this life will become angelic beings in your next encounter, your next experience, and you will possibly be trained by the Archangel Cassandra who will show you how to create that intervention, so to speak, so that those who are about to destroy themselves choose another path. Wow. Wow. And then and then think about the difference that those who have chosen another path make in the lives of those who are about to make the same decision. Hmm. They devote themselves to that intervention and they save the lives of many who might have had the same outcome. Oh, that's just beautiful. So I have and one more quick question. I'm sorry yes. to, I just have to ask because of my nephew um, about autism. What is the message with autism? Why are so many children autistic? Master teachers have autism. Mm. Master teachers come onto the planet in order to teach the rest of you how to love those who are abnormal, as you would mm. say. They are not normal. They don't fit in the boxes that the rest of you create and therefore they have come to teach all of you how to love. Mm. That's their job. And when that job is complete, 
then of course they retreat back into another dimension through the process of separation or death as you call it though there is no death the master mm-hmm. teacher spirit has commented on that a number of times mm-hmm. it is simply a process of beginning again birth or rebirth that is beautiful I could talk to you forever but unfortunately <laughs> I have to wrap it up because of time thank you so much Archangel Raphael for joining me today it was such a beautiful conversation thank you it has been a great honor to merge our energies with yours so be it Oh, back again. (laughs) Back again. That was wild. That was so wonderful. It was such a beautiful conversation. Like, I have to go back later on when it goes up and re-listen to the show. Because when I'm doing it, I'm not, it's harder for me to really absorb it. So I have to listen. Thank you, Gregory. I love you so much. And I can't wait to have you back. Thank you. Guys, check out his webinar. Go ahead. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Me too. (laughs) All right. We'll talk again soon. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave, wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. Peace.